He woke with a gasp, heart pounding like a drum in his ears. Where was he? The air crackled with an unseen energy, a strange luminescence bathing everything in an ethereal glow. He sat up, his eyes struggling to adjust to the otherworldly vista before him. Around him a vast plain stretched to the horizon, the sky above a swirling vortex of colors he couldn't name. The air hummed with an unsettling silence, broken only by the whisper of wind across the barren landscape. As his mind slowly pieced together the fragments of memory, a chilling realization washed over him. This was no ordinary awakening. He was dead. His last breath, a fading memory of a hospital room, the sterile scent of antiseptic, the rhythmic beep of a machine now silent. It all came flooding back, a torrent of images and sensations, the accident, the pain, the fading light, and then, nothing. Now this. This strange, surreal existence. He stood, his legs shaky beneath him, his body feeling strangely insubstantial, as if he were a wisp of smoke about to be scattered by the wind. Fear, cold and sharp, pierced through him. Where was he? What was this place? As his gaze swept across the landscape, he noticed figures in the distance, hundreds of them, perhaps thousands, all moving with a sense of urgency, their forms shimmering like heat haze. They seemed to be heading towards a point on the horizon where a colossal structure pierced the swirling sky above. He couldn't make out its details, but an overwhelming sense of dread emanated from it, sending shivers down his spine. He was drawn towards it, pulled by an invisible force he couldn't resist. His journey, he knew, had just begun. He walked for what felt like hours, the landscape around him unchanging, the ground beneath his feet strangely springy, as if he were walking on clouds. The figures around him, a silent, spectral procession, moved with a strange mix of trepidation and anticipation. He could hear snippets of their conversations now, whispers carried on the wind, their voices filled with a mixture of hope and despair. They spoke of judgment, of deeds weighed on scales of cosmic justice, of paradise and damnation. He was on the precipice of understanding, the fragments of his forgotten faith coalescing into a terrifying reality. This was Judgment Day. As he drew closer, the colossal structure on the horizon resolved itself into a magnificent gate, its pearly white spires reaching towards the heavens, its surface shimmering with an otherworldly light. Angels, their forms vast and terrible, guarded the entrance, their wings blocking out the sky, their eyes burning with a fierce, unwavering intensity. They scrutinized each soul that passed beneath their shadows, their expressions unreadable. A wave of nausea washed over him, his heart pounded against his ribs, a drumbeat of fear echoing his impending judgment. But it was the scene unfolding before the gate that truly terrified him. Some souls were seized by the monstrous angels, their cries of terror echoing across the plain as they were dragged away, swallowed by the shadows that clung to the edges of this divine court. Their faces were twisted in agony, their forms contorted as if racked by unimaginable pain. The sight sent shivers down his spine, a cold dread seeping into his bones. Were these the faces of the damned, their sins etched onto their very beings for eternity? The thought was unbearable, yet he couldn't tear his gaze away. He had to understand. He had to know what awaited him. He found himself swept along with the throng of souls, an unwilling participant in this macabre procession. The air grew heavy with the stench of fear, the anguished cries of the judged a constant undercurrent to the oppressive silence. He saw men and women he had known in life, their faces etched with a terror that transcended death. A former neighbor, his hands clasped in prayer, his face a mask of supplication, was dragged away by a hulking angel, his pleas for mercy ignored. A childhood friend, her eyes wide with terror, her mouth open in a silent scream, was cast into the shadows, her fate unknown. He watched as a man, his face contorted in a rictus of pain, was held aloft by two angels, his sins projected onto the swirling sky above, played out like a gruesome spectacle for all to see. Lies, deceit, acts of cruelty both small and large flickered above him, a damning indictment of a life lived in darkness. He shut his eyes, unable to bear the sight of the man's suffering, the raw agony that emanated from his very being. But even with his eyes closed, he couldn't escape the man's gut-wrenching cries, the pleas for forgiveness that echoed across the plain, only to be met with the cold indifference of the divine court. It was a scene of unimaginable terror, the air thick with despair, the ground seemingly trembling beneath the weight of divine judgment. He felt a surge of panic, a primal fear that threatened to consume him. 
What sins would be revealed when his turn came? What hidden shames would be laid bare before the eyes of creation? The uncertainty was unbearable, a heavy weight settling in his stomach, a knot of dread tightening its grip on his soul. Yet, amidst the chaos and despair, a glimmer of hope emerged. He noticed a group of souls bathed in a warm golden light, their faces serene and joyful being ushered towards a different path. They moved with a grace he could only envy, their eyes filled with a peace that surpassed all understanding. He watched as they were greeted not by fearsome angels, but by beings of pure light, their forms radiating warmth and love, their eyes filled with an all-encompassing compassion. He felt a pull towards them, a longing for the peace that seemed to emanate from their very beings. He followed their gaze towards the source of the golden light, and saw, nestled at the base of a colossal tree, a sight that stole the breath from his lungs. The tree itself was a marvel, its branches heavy with leaves that shimmered like emeralds, its bark a tapestry of silver and gold. Beneath its sprawling canopy, a banquet table stretched as far as the eye could see, laden with fruits and delicacies he could only imagine. Angelic figures, their wings a symphony of light and color, moved among the seated souls, offering goblets filled with sparkling liquids and plates piled high with delectable foods. Laughter, pure and joyous, rang out from beneath the tree, a stark contrast to the cries of anguish that filled the air around him. As he watched, a sense of longing welled up within him, a yearning for the peace and joy that radiated from that haven. Who were these souls who dined with angels, their faces aglow with an inner light? What deeds had they accomplished in their mortal lives to deserve such a reward? He strained to hear their conversations, hoping for a clue, a hint of the secret to their serenity. And then, as if in answer to his unspoken question, he heard a word whispered on the wind, carried on the breath of an angel. Righteousness. Righteousness. The word struck him with the force of a physical blow. He had spent his life chasing shadows, seeking fulfillment in material possessions, in fleeting pleasures, in the approval of others. He had ignored the whispers of his conscience, the promptings of his soul, choosing instead the easy path, the path of least resistance. He had justified his actions, rationalized his choices, convinced himself that true happiness lay in the pursuit of worldly desires. But now, faced with the undeniable reality of the afterlife, the flimsy facade he had constructed crumbled around him, revealing the hollowness beneath. He saw now, the futility of his pursuits, the emptiness of his existence. The things he had valued, the accomplishments he had clung to, seemed insignificant in the face of eternity. He was laid bare before the divine, his soul exposed, his deeds laid out for judgment, and the judgment he knew would not be kind. He had wasted his life, squandered the precious gift of existence on trivialities. He had not lived a life of righteousness. He had not lived a life worthy of the paradise he now glimpsed from afar. Yet, even in the face of this realization, a flicker of hope remained. For he had also witnessed the power of compassion, the transformative potential of love. He had seen the joy that radiated from those who had lived lives of service, who had dedicated themselves to something greater than themselves. And in that moment, he understood. Judgment was not about punishment, but about consequence. It was about reaping what one had sown, whether in this life or the next. He didn't know what awaited him, what fate had in store. Would he be cast into the shadows, his soul forever stained with the mark of his failings? Or would he be granted a chance to atone, to strive for the righteousness he now craved? The uncertainty was terrifying, yet strangely liberating. For in that moment of stark vulnerability, stripped bare before the eyes of the divine, he found a clarity he had never known in life. He understood that true freedom lay not in the pursuit of pleasure or the accumulation of possessions, but in the alignment of his will with a higher purpose. He looked back at the throng of souls still awaiting judgment, their faces etched with a mixture of hope and despair. He wanted to reach out to them, to share his newfound understanding. He wanted to tell them that it was not too late, that even in the face of judgment, there was always the possibility of redemption. But the words wouldn't come. He could only watch as they marched towards their fate, each step carrying them closer to their own personal reckoning. He turned away from the spectacle of judgment and began to walk. He didn't know where he was going, but he knew he could no longer stand idly by, paralyzed by fear and regret. He had been granted a second chance, a chance to witness the true measure of a life well lived. And though he didn't know what lay ahead, 
He walked with a newfound purpose, his heart filled with a fragile hope, the echoes of judgment ringing in his ears, a constant reminder of the path he must now choose.